Welcome to Mystery Us. I'm Tony Pratt, your host for Mystery Us. And on this edition of Mystery Us, our guest is Paul Von Ward. Paul is an interdisciplinary cosmologist and independent scholar who is the author of several books, including Our Solarian Legacy, God's Genes and Consciousness, and his latest work is The Soul Genome, Science and Reincarnation. Welcome to Mystery S, Paul. Thank you very How much, How are you Tony. doing? I'm happy to be here. Great. Uh, Paul, most of the ideas about reincarnation in the past have involved some kind of religious belief or concepts that are of a spiritual or mystical mm -hmm. nature. In your book, you explore the possibility that reincarnation could be a natural phenomena and universal aspect of Homo sapiens physical and conscious evolution. What evidence led you to pursue a scientific explanation of reincarnation? Well, uh, I think there's a lot of evidence. And what I do in the book is I introduce a number of areas of evidence that I think support the notion of reincarnation mm -hmm. that most people don't think about in terms of reincarnation. Usually, as you mentioned in your introduction there, uh, people think of uh, reincarnation in terms of some ethereal spirit, the soul that somehow has uh, nothing to do with daily living but incarnates human beings at the time of birth or at the time of conception. Those beliefs vary. Right. And that somehow it comes in and the soul has an experience living through a human. In other words, the human is somehow different from the uh, soul okay. that was reincarnated. Uh, but about 50 years ago, a psychiatrist at the University of Virginia named Ian Stevenson began to take a scientific approach and collect stories of children who alleged to have, uh, who were alleged to have uh, memories of previous mm -hmm. lives, and they, they knew things about people who'd lived before. They knew facts about locations, about. Uh, incidents that happened in the lives of these people who were now deceased. Sure. And uh, he found in India, in uh, Asia, in the Middle East, in Europe, and the United States, many cases, about 3,000, between 2,500 and 3,000 cases of people where these memories could actually be validated, meaning that the information that these children had uh, could be confirmed as reflecting events in the past. Right. Now, that doesn't prove reincarnation, okay. but it's suggestive of the lifetime in the past somehow transmitting into the present lifetime this information and knowledge. He also found uh, physical similarities between these children and their alleged previous lives. So this was the first real scientific effort to to gather data that was empirical. You had pictures, you had measurements, you had recordings, you had right. documents, all of these things that science can do something with. And uh, he died last year in 2007. But uh, some year before, some time before he died, he began to review all of this data that he had, all this information, and he said, mm -hmm. I've got all this evidence of this happened in the past, these people in the present know it. These people in the present resemble those people in the past. Mm -hmm. What is the explanation? Yeah. And so his thought was, uh, maybe it's something like a container. And he used a Greek term called psychophore, a container that sort of carries it. Now, he didn't really have a lot of uh, experience with uh, some of the new areas of research in biology and physics, mm -hmm. which suggests that all physical organisms have these energetic patterns, have information right. that are in a field that is not physical, mm -hmm. but it, it accompanies uh, the physical uh, life of a person, the life of an insect, or some other species. All right. living species have this field. So as I began to do research on reincarnation, uh, to do a different kind of book some years ago, uh, I reread, I had met Ian 15, mm -hmm. 20 years ago when he was doing the work back in the early 90s. I reread his work, and then I read some other books of cases of people who uh, had the same kind of evidence. And I found that in looking at all these cases, there were about five different categories of empirical information. That right. You could look at and identify it, evaluate it. I could look at it, a third party could look at it, and we could talk about it. Uh, these were not just memories or dreams or uh, 
uh, ideas that came out of a hypnotic session mm -hmm. that only the person who had them could say, this is what I had. Now, that yeah. doesn't mean that some of those memories and things aren't valid, but mm -hmm. you couldn't test them yourself. I couldn't test them. So I began to uh, calculate sort of the areas based on a lot of the best cases that are out there, and I found that there were a whole set, there was a whole set of physical mm -hmm. features that seemed to carry forward from the previous life to this lifetime. And there were physical Physical bodily features, characteristics. Bodily character. Well, okay. one of them we call uh, physical architecture, which really is the bone structure. Is this the biometrics? That, the, uh, the biometrics that I mentioned uh, in our earlier discussion. Uh, this is where scientists have found that the genetic uh, stability of certain things in our body seem to carry through the whole lifetime, uh, despite changes in health and other conditions. That's the physical architecture. The way you know the proportions of our nose and eyes. Not to and mention chin. different parents. I mean, you would think you would just have the characteristics you of your parents. You don't. You have general uh, resemblances in most cases, but what biometrics has done, where and biometrics we might just mention is what uh, uh, security firms now use to take a picture of your face and and have the picture in the computer, and then if you show up at the the door and want to get into a secure location, they compare your face and the picture of you in the computer, mm -hmm. and they measure all these dimensions and say, you look close enough to the picture in our computer, we'll let you in the door. Right. So I used that technology to measure faces of people. I didn't use the computer technology because we were doing cases that involve people with photographs and portraits from previous lifetimes or old photographs that weren't digital in the previous lifetime. So you had the physical characteristics, not just the faces, but the body type, mm -hmm. the hair, patterns, the ear forms, the hand finger proportions, uh, and uh, these characteristics along with voice mm -hmm. uh, seem to be stable. Finger types, the color of your eyes, what race you are, which sex you are may seem, may change or seems to change mm. from these past lives to the present ones. Then we looked at the mental uh, factor, the way we think how we analyze, how we uh, synthesize information, uh, what we do about information that we have, that's a whole pattern. And you can use psychological IQ tests and other tests to compare uh, past lives and present lives. There was a great deal of correspondence in my strong cases. Same thing about emotions. Same thing about the way we interact with other people, you know, the extrovert, introvert, uh, dichotomy mm -hmm. uh, in emotions, the person who's anxious all the time or the person who's calm all the time. In other words, you evaluate people on all these factors and compare the previous life to this life. And the strongest cases we had uh, in our pilot study, mm -hmm. uh, which we have been conducting for the last couple of years and are now going to continue with other cases and new cases from the public, right? Uh, you have evidence that anyone can look at and say, this person seems more like that person who lived 100 years ago or 50 years ago mm -hmm. than anybody else who's living today. And so that degree of correspondence uh, is pretty powerful evidence. It's, there's some sort of carry forward. Right. And I call it the psychoplasm. It's a little bit uh, different from Stevenson's term. Psychophore. Turn. Psychophore was container. Right. But th it's more than a container. It, it's your physical uh, DNA, the mm -hmm. genotype, it's your memories, it's your knowledge, it's your emotional state, your emotional predispositions, uh, all of these things that make us a real, piece, a real person. I right. call it the, uh, the whole package. <laughs> okay, so th you call this model, the psychoplasm model of information and energetic patterns, and this, this is what acts as the mechanism for transferring past life learning and adaptations. Absolutely. In other words, it's... But how does that, how does that work though? Well, it's, it, that's a big mystery. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're okay. on your mis mystery mysterious... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, it's, it's, I, I compare it to the uh, physics mystery of black holes. 